Hey, welcome back to Robot Cantina. Today's going to be a little bit different, and we're going to be doing another unboxing video. You see, we're going to need some more parts to get our street legal go kart to do what? Go faster? I can't hear you. Go, go faster. faster! That's right. Seems the cement mixer engine that we're using is going to need a little help, and most of the parts we need have arrived. You guys ready? Turbo! Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's do the first box. Now, anybody care to guess what's in the box? Turbo! No, it's not a turbo. All right, some gaskets. Now, these gaskets are hard to get, so we need to be careful with them. All right, and a bag. This kind of reminds me of a movie I saw a long time ago. Hopefully, there's something good in the bag. Oh yeah, this is good. All right, well, apparently we do have a turbo. Now this is the absolute smallest turbo I could find, and I believe it's the infamous $100 eBay turbo. Well, actually it's $120 with free shipping. Still, a turbo for the price of a pizza is pretty good. Well, maybe a few pizzas. So this is an RHB31, or also known as a VZ21 turbo. And, uh, well, these things have a bad reputation, and who knows, maybe they really are crap, or maybe it's all in the way they're installed. Anyway, this looks like the hole where all the boost comes out of. And these are the spinny thingies. That's definitely where the oil goes in, and that is where it comes out. Right here is the water jacket. Now, some people will tell you that these turbos will work fine without cooling them, but I think we'll run cooling lines anyway. Now the boost is set by this wastegate accumulator, and as I recall, this turbo generates 15 pounds of boost. Now that's going to be way too much, and we're going to have to dial it back to a reasonable number. All right, well the next box is, um, a virtual box. Well, the stuff I ordered hasn't arrived yet, so bear with me. That was easy to open. Now let's get them out of the box and take a better look. Uh, and let's make them bigger, and uh, let's go ahead and change the color. That's better. So these are the weldable flanges that we'll need to install the VZ21 Turbo. Now I could probably make these, but for 35 bucks, that's a pretty good deal. And of course, these are another item from eBay. So let's do a quick rundown. Now this guy is the flange that the engine exhaust goes to. And this one is where the exhaust exits. Actually, I'm not sure what this one's for. Perhaps another type of exit flange? Anyone know about that? Anyway, let's move on. This and this. One is for the air intake and the other one is for the uh, air output or boost. This one's for the oil in, and this one covers the water jacket. So the water jacket cover needs to be modified with an input and output nipple, and we're going to get into all that when we set up the turbo. So the next item up is something I had left over from a previous project. Now this is a liquid to air intercooler, and like I said, this is just junk that I had lying around, but you can still get these on eBay for about $120. So this type of intercooler uses water or antifreeze to cool the intake charge, and they do add quite a bit of power to the basic turbo system. Not only is it a power adder, it also may help keep the engine a little bit cooler. We'll see. Now we're gonna need a water pump and a radiator. I think for the radiator, we'll probably use a heater core or something like that. For the water pump, I think this will probably work. Now this is a small electric water pump that I poached from an old Cadillac. This little guy was part of the HVAC system and I'm not 100% sure it still works. So either this or something like this should be fine. Well, turbochargers seem to work best with fuel injection. So basically we're going to be building a fuel injected turbocharged cement mixer engine for our street legal go-kart. So I bet you can guess what's in this box. It's the cheapest small engine fuel injection kit on eBay. Now I'm not 100% sure this kit's gonna be compatible with the turbo, but I say we give it a try. I do have another system we can get into if this one doesn't work out, so not to worry. So this is a fully programmable fuel injection kit for the cement mixer engine. Well, actually it's more of a universal fit kit and we'll have to do some fabrication to make it work. Okay, well here's the throttle body and it looks pretty good. The bore measures at 28 millimeter, which is a little bit bigger than the stock carburetor on the 420 engine. Now the injector <laughs> looks a little bit cheesy, but after all, this ain't no Ferrari part. Now over here we have a combination throttle position sensor, a manifold pressure sensor, and an air intake temperature sensor. Now unfortunately the manifold pressure sensor won't read positive pressure, or in other words it won't measure boost. 
Now that's not really a problem. We can always add the right sensor. That is assuming the software will let us do that. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Now, <laughs> looks like it also comes with some fancy throttle cable thingies. Okay, well this is the fuel line they expect us to use. And well, polyurethane is rated for fuel, but it seems a little on the cheap side. And we'll probably be upgrading this. This is definitely the ECU, and it looks like it's waterproof and decent packaging. And like I said before, this ECU is fully programmable. And yep, here's the USB cable. Nice. Now this looks like one of those sandwiches you get off the Roach Coach. Let's see. Oh, it's the fuel pump. I guess the good news is, it's a very small package, but it also looks like the fuel pressure regulator is an integral part of the pump, which may give us some problems with the turbo. Now I'm sort of thinking of running 4 to 5 pounds of boost to start with, and we might get away with it. Now this thing's a tiny oxygen sensor, and also known as an O2 sensor. Now this is interesting, it's also a heated O2 sensor. This is most likely what they call a narrow band sensor, and it doesn't have the resolution that we're going to need. Normally we would want to use a wide band sensor to monitor the air fuel ratio. Not to worry, I do have a wide band sensor in my bag of tricks, I just need to make sure the software will let us use something like that. Once again, we'll get into that soon enough. So this looks like the harness and the ignition module. Let's see, we got a ground wire. The blue wire looks like the ignition pickup wire, or uh, also known as the crank position signal. CLT, now that's the coolant temperature sensor, except the 420 doesn't have any coolant. So this would most likely have a thermistor in it and would bolt to the cylinder head. So technically this is the cylinder head temperature sensor. Let's see, we got key switch, and that would be switch 12 volts from the battery. Now this ignition wire would go to the positive side of the CDI coil, at least I think so, I have to double check that. So let's hook up some of this stuff to the ECU and see what's left over. Let's unpack some more goodies. So this is the CDI ignition coil they recommend. I got some orange ones because the orange ones look more high performance, and I'll bet they add another 10 horsepower. Now the ignition coil was 6 bucks, and the fuel injection kit was $288, which is pretty cheap for an almost complete fuel injection package. But the jury's still out on whether this stuff's any good. Now I bet a lot of you folks never mess with fuel injection, and why would you? The thing is, I'm pretty good with this stuff, and I've done a bunch of fuel injection builds and tunes in the past. So this actually looks like it's going to be pretty easy. Of course, I haven't looked into the software package yet, so that's probably the only thing that's unknown at this point. So my understanding is the ECU on this kit can do ignition timing, and if that's true, that would be awesome. So for the crankshaft sensor, they recommend using a Hall Effect proximity sensor. Now normally I get my proximity sensors through Automation Direct, but they seem to be out of stock on cheap sensors right now. I picked this sensor up on Amazon for 8 bucks, and that's pretty cheap. Unfortunately, I don't know the operating frequency of this sensor. More than likely it'll be fine. If we run the engine at 4200 RPM, the frequency we'll need to measure is about 70 Hz, which is pretty slow, and the sensor should be able to handle that. If not, we'll get a better one. And of course, this sensor has the standard industrial color code, so no surprises there. Now we may need to add a 1 kilo ohm pull-up resistor if the ECU doesn't already have one, but that's easy enough to check. And it looks like the last plug is going to be for the oxygen sensor. Alright, well this looks like it's definitely going to be simple to install. Now we're going to be doing this in two steps. First we'll get the engine to run with the fuel injection, and then we're going to add the turbo. Doing both at the same time is probably not a good idea. Alright, well let's take a look at a problem that cropped up during the making of the last video. The chain we're using pretty much failed after 40 miles of light use. Now I did my due diligence and lubricated the chain before and after installation, but for some reason we had a meltdown on two links, and a bunch of other links weren't that far behind. So this chain is FUBAR. So for a replacement chain, we're going to go with the RK530 XSOZ1. <laughs> now this is an RX ring chain, whatever that means. Now according to the box, it works on touring, off-road, and sport bike. But it doesn't mention street legal go-karts, so I reckon we'll just need to give it a shot. Now let's have a look at the new chain. Wow, this chain is stiff. Now someone mentioned in the comments that an O-ring chain may take a little bit more power to run. 
Hopefully we have enough extra power, otherwise we're in big trouble. The new chain is the same pitch as the old one, but it looks to be a little bit wider. I guess that's expected with this type of chain. The only problem I can foresee is we may have to modify the chain adjuster, and that's not too big of a deal. Now here's something a lot of people have recommended. Let's take a look. I'll speed this up because it's painful to watch. What we have here is an aluminum belly pan that's made for a Generation 1 Honda Insight. This thing's going to serve two purposes. First, it's going to keep the crap off the chain drive, and more importantly, it may in fact get us a little bit more top speed. I was able to purchase this pan for a mere $125, and that includes shipping. The person who sells these is well known in the Honda Insight community, and even has a YouTube channel. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description for Scott's channel and some other information if you're interested in one of these belly pans. Anyway, I'm really excited to try this out. Now some of you may have noticed the big box at the beginning of the video, and I'm sure many of you are hoping for a 670, and well, that's going to happen, but just not today. Today we have another 420 Hemi to unbox, except we ain't going to unbox it. If you don't know what a 420 Hemi looks like, go back and watch the previous 7 videos. It's the same engine. Now, we picked up a new 420 specifically to do the turbo build. This engine's going to get broken in, and then we're going to disassemble it and replace the connecting rod with an ARC billet rod. And while we're in there, we're going to go ahead and upgrade the valve springs. We're not looking to overbuild this engine, we just want it to survive. Well that's a lot of stuff and we'll be busy for a long time. I'm pretty excited to get started on the fuel injection right away. However, in the next episode we'll install the new chain, the belly pan, and, and even get a front end alignment. Then we'll head over to the Hillbilly Proving Grounds and see if any of these passive mods have helped our top speed. I'm betting we pick up a few miles per hour, but you never know. Hey, if you made it this far you must have liked the video. Do me a favor and click on the like button. We have many more videos on the way and you don't want to miss any of them. So now would be a good time to click on the subscribe button. And don't forget to click on the notification bell. Thanks for watching and until next time.